Steven Franco vlog number two. Um, okay, this reading was pretty interesting. I got in depth of the projects, which helped me understand them more a little bit. Some of it was still confusing. So, um, okay, on to the questions. To me, I think the whole copyright and ownership and art and like internet and all that relate to how like Eva and Franco like said knowledge was just plagiarism because information is influenced is influenced and just passed through p different people all the time like copyright and ownership like relates to art and the internet because like people are just taking the site and republishing it the original authors still have claim for it it's just that their, t their clone is like inspiring more ideas which is what what like art is art is when you get inspired by another person's art or another person's idea or other people's work um the whole the hacktivism and what evelyn franco did i think the only difference was like hacktivism was sort of like a hate thing against that specific company that they were doing that to for like people hack like people hack in their stuff to act against them but evan franco weren't against the company themselves they were just interested in their work and wanted to learn more but to add it to like net art and look deeper into the author into authors behind the work um, the nike swoosh i didn't really get the meaning of the nike ground like what were they i didn't know like what were they were trying to prove i was probably not reading it right or like interpreting it right but i guess i think it was a way to show that nike was going to be another logo that would be bombarded into the city and you'll like base it'll basically um take over a lot of consumerism like other popular brands do mm, the second life port the second life avatars i totally think are just like portraits but like avatars because they are both like raw images of a person and I think the only difference is that an avatar is a raw image of what you perceive yourself, how you see yourself, but then like actual portraits are what other people actually see at, see as you. So it's like the only difference is like the identity, the difference between identity, like what people see you as, which is portrait versus how you see yourself, which is usually your avatar. You base your avatar on what how you want it to look like or how you think you look like. The synthetic performances, the concerns were just just like the original performances, like the questions such as like um, sexuality, violence, and like feminism and all that stuff. But it's also going back to the whole, I guess, like the whole copyright stuff, just like plagiarism, originality, and like authenticity. Um. I guess that's the only concerns that I got from the reading. It makes sense, though. It ties in with the copyright from the other reading, the other chapter. Um, how do these functions? Mm -hmm. For the performances and are they like functioning differently in like Second Life to the avatars? I think it's like what the book said like about videos, the real world is like seeing the, well, in the real world, seeing the performances we couldn't be as like engaged as we can be in Second Life. Because like in Second Life it's, it's, it's like a video game because it's much more interactive video games you like walk around, click stuff, like, do all kinds of things, just, and explore, just like you can do in Second Life, you click around, you build stuff, you're, like, interactive into it, but not in, like, the real world, most of us just, like, keep to ourselves and just observe from the outside, rather than 
getting in the way of the performance. I think the main theme I saw with their projects was like the whole fake identity theme to get their point across. Like they said in the book, they like used it to get an honest, they had to fool their audience to get an honest opinion. And I think their art was like about opening the eyes of their audience to like identity and different perspectives because it like kind of goes back to the whole what's really real. The dead horse flogging, the flogging a dead horse thing, uh, that really confused me. But um, I think the, it goes deeper than the actual, actual song name. Like the whole band thing, how it's this, they described it as the smallness of the band. I think that represents Evan Finkel because they're kind of like a small band together when they do their projects and all that stuff. And like they said how it's just like what they do, like how they're doing it through communication and their appearance without actually the band. That's how they described it. It's like how they actually do their projects through communication and appearance without using like the main aspect of the project. Just like their movie posters, they use like the poster and the media except for the actual movie. And I also think that the dead horse part of the, of the title is another code name for the real world and flogging is I guess it's like mixing up the real world like flogging in an art sense would be Evan Frankel's performances and their projects how they're kind of different and they like stir up questions and all that stuff which I guess is flogging a dead horse or flogging the real world I really don't know what it means but I, that's how I interpret it